You know, you get used to a certain lifestyle and then boom, gone. No nannies? No nannies. You know what, she comes from hillbilly land and do things very differently out there. She certainly got the blood boiling. What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to Grim. Today, I have another classic wife swap episode reaction for you. And this one, I'm going to give you fair warning. I get quite heated on because, well, reasons. Today, they're pitting up a multi-millionaire family against a family of, well, I would say what you could consider as a more normal income type family in America. And this rich family legit just straight up bullies the poor people. Like, it's absolutely insane. Make sure you watch up until the very end just to see how crazy this family acts. And do me a favor, if you like this series already and you want to see me make more make sure you drop a like and a comment letting me know that you want to see more because this is a series i really want to do but i'm trying to gauge your guys's reaction on how much you're enjoying it so without any further ado i'm going to give you some backstory on these two families first the multi-millionaires they're called the spolansky family they live in manhattan new york and they legit have no interaction with their kids whatsoever they have three kids you barely see them on this tv episode because they have nannies and an entire lineup of staff to take care of their family and household while they're away the dad works all day and makes you know his millions doing whatever he does probably banking or something and the wife just goes out and shops and works out at the gym that's literally her reason for being away from her home and her family then you have the bradley family who is from upstate new jersey and they are more like i said average run-of-the-mill type family in fact both of them work and the wife herself has two jobs she's a school bus driver by day and i guess also by day a wood shopper so the two of them are about to completely switch live and i already know this is about to be a total train wreck <laughs> You guys, I don't do this kind of manual labor. Come on. Somebody else does this for me. Oh, God. And we're already starting off on a great foot with this rich wife who is part of the Spolansky family. She's up here in upstate New Jersey, like I was saying, having to live the life of a normal, guess you could say, possibly poor person. And oh, my God, she's already freaking out having to take her luggage up two flights of stairs. Wait, no, not even two flights. What am I saying? Two stairs total. Yeah, that's not even a tenth of a flight of stairs, bro. And it doesn't even look like that heavy of luggage, yet she's already complaining, saying things like, I pay people to do that for me. So I can already tell this lady had just has the worst mindset about things completely detached from reality as a result of her richness and uh you guys are probably gonna get a little feeling for how i feel about these types of people as i am going to be going absolutely in on this woman if she continues to act like a child in this way thinking she's better than this entire situation already like literally in this intro clip where she's walking into their house for the first time she sees coffee that has been made and left out which i would say is a normal thing especially if you're getting up and going in the morning you got to get the kids ready for school and yourself ready for work and everything sometimes you forget to you know take out your extra coffee oh god forbid it needs to be washed she sees that and she's like, oh, that is frightening. I usually pay people to clean my house, so I never see things in disarray like this. And then she spots a vacuum cleaner in their closet and is like, I don't know how to use one of those, so that has no interest in me. Like, I know she's probably playing it up for the camera, this character. I'm sure that's something she's instructed to do. But still, to even speak in this way is absolutely disgusting. And guess what? She has a freaking breakdown as a result of it because this is just so difficult for her to face being poor. <laughs> You know, driving up to a place that there's a bus in the driveway and there's a truck and, and that stuff I see in the movies. That's not stuff that, you know, I've had to deal with. So had to deal with what are you even speaking about? This woman is crying on her couch alone right now, freaking out because she saw that there was coffee left in the coffee maker and is like, there's trucks in the driveway and a school bus. And my kids, they don't even get driven in a school bus to school. They have a chauffeur and we take them in a Maybach. Like this is so poor that I wasn't prepared for this. I wasn't ready to deal with this. Like, what exactly are you dealing with? She's already hating on these people's entire lives and she's never even met the family so far. Oh my God, I'm getting heated. So in between my two jobs. I'm not going to work. I'm working. And she even breaks the fourth wall here, looking at the producers like, wait, I don't know what I signed up for on the show. I know you guys flew me over to this house, but I have to actually work. Yes, you do have to go out and drive the school bus. How the hell are the kids gonna get to school now that their school bus driver is away for 10 days on wife swap? You can't really explain that to them. They still gotta get their education. So yeah, you gotta go in and drive, bro. And you gotta chop some wood, which I'm sure she's gonna have a field day with. Go out to chop wood most of the time. I stopped chopping at nine. Oh, she's got a three hour wood chopping session going on. And the way that she laughs at this almost, it, it, I don't know, it just gives me vibes of her thinking she's so much better than these people. And that because these people have to do things like chop wood in the winter time outside for hours on end each day to make enough money to live and pay their bills, she just finds that so amusing and hilarious. And I find that so disgusting <laughs> that she reacts in that way. And again, just showing this lady's detached from reality. That's her shocker is seeing how much work this woman's doing in a day to day. You know, she does all this and
and still goes and cleans her house and makes food for her family. It just really shows this woman's character though, the way she's already reacting to this whole situation. She's not interested in cooking. She's not a traditional wife. Breakfast for the family and she makes her famous pancakes, eggs with bacon. What a woman. What a woman. She's like actively mocking this lady as she's reading her list of what she does in the day, which includes making a delicious breakfast for her family that she's known for because it's so good and she's mastered cooking it so well. Like you're really laughing at that. When you have your nannies cook your kids food and something I didn't mention, when they get home, they don't have dinner together or anything. They could still order some nice takeout. No, they have the nannies make the kids dinner and they go out and leave to a nice bar restaurant place and eat some fancy food without the kid. It's like they had kids, but they didn't even want to. It it's ridiculous. And one thing I want to mention about this other family because I like to say that you know in most of these episodes there are definitely things that that both families can have takeaways from the thing I have issues with is this lady on the other side that is part of the Bradley family kind of lives this traditional nuclear family type set of family values and goals and I just feel that's so old school especially that should not be on the table once the wife herself is actually out working a job as well let alone two jobs chopping wood all day and driving the school bus I'm sure the uh, husband has you know a very difficult job that is taxing as well but it seems like you both both are sharing the burden of working, so you both should therefore take care of the house. It shouldn't be left up to this lady, and she's stretching herself way too thin with this family, so hopefully that's something she can take away from this, is that she does deserve a little bit of her herself time, you know what I'm saying? And she can ask her husband to pick up around the house a little bit more too. Who shops for clothes? Oh look, she goes shopping almost every day. <laughs> We go shopping for clothes twice a year. So it's kind of funny. Then it cuts to them on their first day. I'm going to be skipping forward here a little bit. But the Bradley wife gets to sleep in for the first time in God knows how long while the maids clean up around the house and the nannies cook the kids breakfast and get them ready for school. I'm sure that was nice for her at this point. It's kind of just like a little vacation on this first week while they, you know, do everything the way the other wife would have done. And meanwhile, on the other end, you have the Spolansky wife who chopped wood for 15 minutes, maybe even less, and was like, no, nope, I'm not going to listen to her instructions, even though the show is based on the fact that I'm supposed to listen to her and then therefore the family listens to me once I switch the rules halfway through, I'm not gonna actually follow her rules. I'm gonna break the literal, you know, goal of the television show and not live like how this other wife is living. Also, she tries to cook bacon, which is this her first time cooking in apparently eight years. I don't cook many home cooked meals myself, so I can't be too annoyed with that, but that is a little bit ridiculous. I mean, come on, dude. I think they expect their mother to cook and they expect her to clean. You know, I feel sorry for her, I do. That's not the kind of mom I am. And as you just saw, the main gripe that the Spolansky wife is having so far is something that I actually agree with her on. Like I said, nuclear kind of family setup they have at this Bradley's house. It just is very old school and it's almost teaching the daughters that this is okay to, you know, be expected to do all this. I'm not saying that you can't take pride in keeping your house clean and keeping your family, you know, all situated, but it's something that the burden should fall on both parents. And that's something I think my generation is becoming a little bit more wise to. So hopefully this stuff isn't, you know, continuing, but I definitely get why she's annoyed with that. A little bit in the morning, he sees the boys takes them to school and then that's I think that might be all he sees them all day long and this is the other main issue of the more rich Spolansky family that the Bradley wife is noticing. These people spend no time with their children. I don't even know if they would accurately be able to say their birthday or maybe even their names had the nannies not have to remind them because they are out working or the dad's working and the wife is out shopping and going to the gym all day. And like I said, they don't have dinner together. They don't really experience anything together. It almost feels like they had these kids for the tax benefits or whatever it might be to continue on their rich legacy. And they don't even have any love for these children whatsoever. I have a question. Now, if you could be transplanted here with your family and live the life that, that my family lives without money being an issue, is that in the least bit appealing? So as if, you know, the movie Dinner for Schmucks wasn't enough fiction, he actually wanted to live this in real life and just brings her out to some rich Manhattan bar with his lawyer, multimillionaire friends, just to ooh and ah at this poor woman and ask her questions like, if you could live like my family and not have money be an issue, would you do that or would you keep your family? And when she of course says no, because money is not something that she allows to drive her life. And therefore I think her family is much better off with it. They seem like a much more loving household that actually cares about each other. I would much rather live there. But to that, they're all just like, wow, Oh, oh my God, you're so brave. Like it's so pretentious and so annoying. And I'm sure this woman felt like she was being paraded around as some sort of prop for this guy. I don't understand one thing. Did you think you were going, going up the food chain or did you think you were going? I don't care what they think of me because I like me. I love my family. I love the way I live. I love my friends. Oh my God. Some of these questions he's asking her, I cannot believe are coming out of somebody's mouth. So he just thinks that this is for her an opportunity to move up the social ladder and the economic ladder by quite a few rungs for a couple weeks. Are, are you enjoying this experience? Are you, are you happy? Are you fulfilled? Like he just looks down upon this woman and you can tell by his line of questioning that he sees her as subhuman. It's disgusting and it's 
it's honestly a trend with many rich people that's why i just don't care for these types of, of people that are so detached from reality and allow money to control their life and their status to control who they see as fit to even have a normal conversation with your wife has written so many things about you. You are not romantic. You are, uh, she feels unappreciated. She works two jobs. You are nothing about the real world. So then the first day, there's already drama between the other couple as well, or, you know, the makeshift couple. As the father gets home from work and she kind of goes off on him, she's like, I had to clean for the first time today and I can't believe you make your wife do this the entire day, which again, I agree with her, but it turns into some sort of verbal spat where she then has to go outside and cry for the second time today already, talking about how she's never been talked to like that. Like she's the one that started in tag this guy you could have tried to start the conversation a little bit better you know what i'm saying and been a little bit less emotional and maybe it wouldn't lead to you both screaming at each other but anyways now it's time for the change and wouldn't you know it the main change that the bradley wife wants to have happen in the spolanski household is to fire or at least you know put them on vacation for the next two weeks their maids and their you know staff that helps them raise these children and to actually focus on each other as a family and help raise these children together as co-parents which is so insane to this guy that he loses his freaking mind. This Bogdanoff twin looking dude, I can't stand his face. I really cannot stand this person's face. But he has a complete fit over it and I, I don't understand why it's such a big deal for him to be forced to hang out with his kids for one week. We can actually put the apartment up for sale then because unfortunately my job is very demanding and it's not like I'm out playing or anything like that. We'll discuss it later. So it sounds like he doesn't even want to be able to have a set deadline of when he gets off work because his work is just, you know, it was, it's what pays for this apartment. So if you don't let me hang out with my work friends in the bar until at least 10 p.m. And, and live my life as if I'm some single bachelor, even though I chose to have a family, eh, we're going to have a problem. And I guess I'll just have to sell the apartment because I'm the only one that's making the bread around here. Like, what a toxic freaking jerk, dude. You're going to do some cleaning, some vacuuming some dusting and you'll love the bathrooms because they're fun because they haven't been done yet and the main change of the other household is that the father and the daughters are going to be doing more to help around the house i think the teenagers definitely could be doing more chores i don't know why they don't seem to be pressured to do it that much when the wife is doing so much as her two jobs and still cleaning around the house everybody's going to pick up their weight and do a little more around the house so i think that's a fine change to expect both of them seem very very calm but you know both husbands are losing their mind over these requests as if it's just altering their life to no return you know she comes from hillbilly land and do things very differently out there she certainly got the blood boiling so you know what this may get a little nasty now and we get a threat out of the Spolansky husband who I am just in pure hatred of because this guy is the worst. Did you hear how he just said that? She's from hillbilly land. He literally sees this woman as being lesser than him because she comes from an area that is less affluent and has less money to her name. When, like I said in the intro or very early on in this video, her family themselves seems thousand times better off. No amount of money can buy the love that this couple has for each other and for their kids and that the kids have for their parents. That's rare to raise a family that well as the Bradleys are doing. Yet he sees it as some sort of just terrible thing that they spend all this time together and they don't grind and they don't make money on Wall Street like I do. Like this dude is just an absolute joke. And like I said, I said this earlier, he legit looks like a Bogdanoff twin. If you don't know who those are, look him up because he is the triplet of these guys. I'm more heartbroken than stressed. Don't be heartbroken. Somebody just slowly ripped out my heart and my gut. The pathetic shell of a person. You are not. Can we get kind of a sweet moment from the Bradley husband here? He actually just realizes how heartbroken he is that he had to be away from his wife for these 10 days and i was telling my girlfriend that like i would be this guy like this would be the main thing i'd be bummed about i don't really care about the lifestyle changes because you know they're probably not permanent it's just for one week but i'd be like dude this is 10 days i gotta be away from bay this sucks yeah it doesn't make sense to really rush home i'm sure she'll have things for me to do and think you know i'm better off here i am and meanwhile, this other husband is not learning a single thing this entire video. He's at the gym and he's like, yeah, I don't want to rush home because, I mean, she's trying to make me hang out with the kids. I'd rather hang out here, you know, and get swole. Plus, she sucks. I can't wait to get rid of this woman. And then it cuts to her reading a bedtime story or just reading a book to his children. And they're literally like, you're such a good mom. I'm going to miss you. Like, it's been so weird to actually be parented and cared for and looked after and seen after this week. Like, that never happens. Of course, they didn't vocalize it in that way because they're children and they don't really know how to formulate their thoughts, you know, that much. But still, they're sad that this woman is leaving because she's more than a nanny. She's showing them what being a mother is like and they're realizing how much they're missing out on by having this lady that's gone away shopping and at the gym all day. 
So for the final night at the Bradley house, they invite some friends over, they make some cookies. It looks like a really good time, but I have to talk to you about this scene that really disturbs me with the Spolansky house. This woman makes a home cooked meal for them and I want you to see how this guy reacts. He's literally putting down her cooking. He just sees her as so poor and so lesser than that he's clowning her in front of his kids when she just wants them to have a home cooked meal together for once at their dining table that they probably have never sat at together since buying it for $10,000. You don't usually have peanut butter, but peanut butter is fine for my kids for dinner. I would have thought peanut was the last dinner Here's you would have done. Something Lantern. extravagant. Here's a Jack Lantern. And he looks legit angry. He looks like he wants to punch this lady. Like, I am worried for this family's safety. I don't like this guy at all. He gives me bad vibes, and I absolutely hate his guts. He's just putting this lady down to the point where she actually leaves because she realizes that she's being talked down to and seen as so disgusting to this guy. And he just orders some, you know, expensive takeout for the family because what she made was so inedible. So yeah, I guess that's kind of the episode. I could show the reunion, but really all it is is the rich wife realizes she admits, yes, I actually should be spending time with my kids. I I don't think that's a sentiment that her husband shares. I think this guy is still a dirtbag that doesn't care about his children and therefore is just going to be going back to, you know, working those long days that he just has to do for them to keep the lights on as if they aren't multimillionaires and as if the wife herself didn't come from some rich family already. Anyways, then the other couple just realize how much they love each other and how painful it was to be apart for 10 days. So if that isn't any indicator of how these two families differ and how much better off this Bradley family is probably in 2022, I don't know what to tell you. I, I literally just explained explains how much actually being around each other and loving each other does for raising a family. The Spolanskis are so much worse off. I want to know what you guys thought of this episode down in the comments below. And if you're enjoying this series, make sure to check out my Patreon as well as I have bonus content going up there featuring face cam that I can't post anywhere else. As always, I appreciate all my patrons over there and the support you guys show on both there and this channel. I, it really means the world to me. I'll catch you guys in the next video. And until next time, peace out.